Richard Barclay, founder and host of the Stonecrest Is It Cop Conference. And I want to take this opportunity to welcome each of you to this year's lectures. Let me begin by thanking my amazing Stonecrest Is It Cop Conference Executive Planning Committee. First of all, let me thank my wife of 51 years, uh, Shirley Barclay, who organizes uh, the latest sessions. Uh, Dr. Shari Miller, Executive Administrator, uh, who takes care of communication uh, and advertising for the conference, as well as presenting a lecture in this year's conference. Let me thank my own personal secretary at Stonecrest Church, uh, Naomi Wright, for her valuable assistance. Uh, David Ferguson, who handles uh, go out and uh, secure sponsorships for us to be able uh, to bring this conference up to you. Uh, Ricky Miller, uh, who organizes yearly our Isikoff Conference Golf Tournament uh, to be held Friday, September the 13th, uh, at the Crystal Lake Golf uh, and Country Club uh, here in Hampton, Georgia. Uh, Dr. Carlos Page uh, keeps our website uh, updated and in tip-top shape. Uh, and then uh, the James uh, Lee Dog Williams, uh, whose Herculean task it is every year uh, to edit and to upload the conference to YouTube uh, and Facebook, and I would dare say uh, the hardest working man uh, among us. Let me especially thank and appreciatively applaud all of our lecturers for the sacrifice of your time and gift, both to prepare and present lectures, as well as workshops to support our thematic thrust each year. Our thematic thrust and theme this year is the playlist studies from the Book of Psalms, where each lecturer uh, has been uh, asked to lecture on their favorite song. Now, we all have these smart devices called uh, smartphones and tablets uh, that give us the ability uh, to go to uh, iTunes or wherever uh, and uh, uh, selectively choose songs that we will have on our individual playlist dependent upon uh, the situation, the communication, uh, the mood. Uh, when I play golf, uh, I have a special playlist uh, when I'm exercising. So we can uniquely uh, create playlists dependent upon the occasion, the situation, uh, and of uh, the mood. That's what we're doing uh, this year as we study uh, the book of Psalms. You're going to find a whole lot of stuff that you did not know about structure, the, the psalm, the kind of psalm uh, that it is. Uh, so uh, we would encourage you to uh, attend daily. And if you miss a session, that's okay. These are all pre-recorded. They have been uploaded uh, and preserved uh, on our Facebook and on uh, our YouTube page. So if you miss a session, you can always go back uh, and review uh, that session. We also encourage you to make donations to the conference by simply going to the website, pressing the donations button, and follow uh, the prompt. Your donations have to support two worthy missions and ministries of mine. Southwestern Christian College Scholarship Fund, uh, in honor of uh, Dr. Richard and Shirley Barclay, we give yearly uh, scholarships to promising minister of students that attend Southwestern Christian College. And the second uh, favorite uh, ministry of mine uh, is Keep It Real Prison Ministry a ministry uh, devoted to helping former uh, incarcerated people uh, to integrate back into the church, the community, 
uh, and the largest society uh, located and headquartered in the New Orleans, Louisiana, and led by David Green. Because of your donation, we were able to send more uh, than $5,000 uh, to our college and keep it real ministry in 2023. And finally, we want to thank Del Crozier, CEO of the Solomon Foundation for your financial sponsorship of the Isikar Conference that we can bring this conference to you without any charge uh, to you. We only ask in return uh, that you give donations in support of Southwestern Christian College and keep it real ministry. So prepare yourself now to be encouraged and inspired by the 2024 edition of the Stonecrest Isikar Conference as we explore our thematic theme and thruster this year, the playlist studies up in the book of Psalms. May the Lord of the harvest bless you, and may he bless you real good. The global population continues to face many challenging situations daily. Climate change. financial losses, fear, anxiety, sickness, death. It may sometimes seem like this season of gloom will never end and many are losing hope. The future may be daunting, but in the midst of your hopelessness, I can assure you that God, who is the creator of this world, still has the world in the palm of his hands. And for this reason, you can still have hope. Well, we want to welcome you both uh, to the uh, Isikar Conference as well as the Wednesday night uh, Bible classes for the uh, Stonecrest uh, Church of Christ. I'm Dr. Richard Barclay, uh, host and founder of uh, the Stonecrest Church of Christ as well as the Stonecrest uh, uh, Isikar Conference. This is our fourth year uh, hosting the conference uh, and as conference host, I want to provide you with uh, the background and the structure uh, of the book of Psalms over uh, a couple of lessons. And then for our church, for 
uh, several weeks as we'll begin a prolonged uh, study of uh, the book of Psalms. Now, our thematic thrust uh, this year uh, is uh, the playlist, uh, an exposition of the book of Psalms. Uh, in the opening video, uh, you saw me uh, on the golf course. Uh, whenever I go to the golf course to play with uh, a very favorite friends of mine, uh, Dr. Ramon Crawford and uh, Ricky Miller, uh, Dr. Jeffries, uh, is our foursome a couple of times a week when we are able to get out uh, to the golf course. Uh, and whenever we start playing golf, one of the first things I do uh, as I get to the first tee uh, is to put on my music, uh, put on my playlist. Uh, those who are familiar with uh, technology or these smartphones uh, are well aware of uh, playlists. Now, some of you uh, will remember a time when uh, we bought uh, uh, records and bought uh, albums and bought uh, DVDs. Uh, but in that kind of format, we were not able to choose the songs we wanted to listen to. Uh, you would listen to uh, uh, an album of Michael Jackson or Prince or uh, uh, Marvin Gaye, and you will only hear their songs. Well, technology has so changed now uh, that we can go to the uh, uh, Apple Store, the iTunes Store, and simply pick and select uh, whatever song that we want to watch this without buying the album. We call that a uh, playlist where you can customize and individualize uh, what songs, what music you want to listen to. And, and I want you to watch this uh, based on the particular situation, a mood, or even uh, traffic, <laughs> or, uh, or even when you are flying, uh, we have customized uh, our playlist. Uh, when we want to get romantic, uh, we ain't playing Amazing Grace. Now, 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 listen, I ain't hating on Amazing Grace. Uh, that's all right for church. That's all right for devotion. Uh, but uh, uh, when it comes to uh, you know, when first ladies start winking and blinking uh, at me, um, I, I got right into Amazing Grace, but 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 that mood and that occasion uh, is it, not the place uh, for uh, Amazing Grace. When I get ready to fly, when I go out to Delta Airlines, go out to the airport, and uh, and of course, obviously, that's my airline. Uh, when I get ready to fly, I have certain music that I listen to. Uh, just as, you know, when I fly and I want to watch a movie, uh, there are certain movies uh, that uh, uh, that that I watch. I, I, I'm a strange fellow. Uh, I, I, I really am. Uh, when I when I fly and I watch a movie, my favorite movie on the plane uh, is 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 that movie called Air Force One. Uh, if you've ever seen the movie, uh, the plane is hijacked and the plane blows up and it goes down and the president is on that plane. And at the last moment, uh, the president uh, is saved. Uh, I, 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 I remember on one occasion, I tried to, a uh, first lady was flying with me and, uh, uh, and I said to her, you want to share one of these headpieces with me? L look at the movie. She said, boy, you're crazy. Why in the world will I be watching a movie where the plane is going down? I told you I'm strange like that. Well, not only am I strange with my uh, movies, uh, I'm kind of unique just like you are with, with the playlist. When I get ready to play golf, 
I turned on certain kinds of music. In fact, I have, as you see on the screen, uh, what is called in my phone, my fairway golf playlist. Just as when you go walking, when you go to the gym, uh, when it's uh, romance, now uh, whether it's uh, on the way to church and you're playing, getting your mind and your spirit and your heart ready for uh, the worship and the praise of God. You, you see, 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 when you're on your way to church, <laughs> you, you ain't putting on no Marvin Gaye. Hope you're not. Uh, you 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 want to put on some gospel music. Uh, you want to put on some praise and worship music. Uh, you know, on the way to church. You you ain't, you ain't playing uh, uh, Roberta Flack. Uh, you you know you you you're not playing Michael Jackson. You're not playing Prince. Not not on the way to church. Now now when you leave church. Now that may be a different story. But but on the way to church, you 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 have a certain kind of playlist. And what I'm going to suggest to you ultimately is that that's what the book of Psalms is. Uh, it's a playlist. And, and I'll share more with that uh, with you uh, in just a moment. But I want you to watch something. When I get ready to play golf, I have a playlist in my phone uh, that's called Fairway Golf. And, I, I you know, I, I, I've already pre-selected the song. Watch this, because it's going to take me about four hours uh, to play uh, a round of golf. And, and I have put four hours worth of listening music uh, just in this one playlist called Fairway Golf. Uh, I, I'm going to start it out with me some Marvin Gaye. Now, I, listen, I need to be talking to my crowd now. Young folk listening to me, uh, you're just going to have to listen for a little bit, and you're probably not going to find your uh, your artist on my playlist. L listen, I, I ain't hating on you. You know, whenever uh, I play golf with my son, whether it's in Houston or here uh, in Georgia, uh, he, he says, Poppy, uh, we're we going to use my playlist. Uh, and and I, listen, that doesn't bother me. In Houston, y'all miss your shout. See, see, that's where he stays. Uh, when I'm in his house, uh, when I'm in his golf cart, uh, when I'm playing on his golf course, uh, you you driving, and so we we, we can play your music. I, I don't problem with, with that because he knows he, he doesn't play that kind of music around me where they cussing and swearing. Uh, yeah, I, I don't listen to that, and, and and he doesn't listen to that. But some of the fellows that he plays with, uh, you know, got all of this cussing and swearing, and 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 I, I can't get into that. I, I ain't feeling that. Uh, but he has some music that, uh, that 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 he plays, and it ain't it ain't my kind of music. Uh, but it ain't my golf course either. <laughs> it, it's not my. Uh, uh, it's not only it's not my golf court, it's not my golf cart. It, it, it's his personal golf cart. So, uh, listen, we're in your golf. But when you come to Georgia, help me preach this thing, somebody. You, you gonna listen to what I listen to? Uh, I'm gonna play my playlist uh, in Georgia in my house on my golf course, playing my playlist. So, so, so you gonna. You, you're going to hear a whole lot of Marvin Gaye. And he's going to start it out with, uh, let's get it on. Oh, okay, okay. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, but but Marvin is my man. I, I'm going to start out uh, with me some Marvin Gaye. And then uh, I, I'm going to move on to some Luther Vandross. Ooh, I, I'm going to move on to Luther. Uh, and, and then... Uh, I, you know, I, I like to show enough old old school stuff. Uh, I, I'm going to hear me some some unforgettable uh, Nat King Cole. Uh, go, go go talk to the brother, uh, and then when I finish with me some Nat King Cole, I'm going to get me some smooth jazz. Ooh, I'm talking to somebody out there today, uh, and, and when I finish my smooth jazz, uh, I'm going to get me some. Kenny G. 
And, and when I finish with me some Kenny G, uh, go get me some Whitney. I, I, oh, I, I'm gonna get me some Whitney Houston. And oh, Roberta Flack is gonna talk to me. Ooh, why not tonight? Oh, I, I know I'm talking to church folk. Uh, but, but you ain't been saved all your life. And don't try to sit at home and act like you've not heard uh, this kind of music, okay? Uh, and then if my golf game is not good that day, I I'm going to put on some gospel music. Because mm. cause if I'm not playing well, uh, I, I need some help from on high. Uh, so so I'm going to put on me some gospel music before uh, that four hours of golf is all over. So so we have specialized lists. Uh, may I suggest to you that uh, the book of Psalms, 150 chapters. Now, I know that the book of Psalms doesn't have what we call chapters uh, or chapter divisions. Uh, you know, we said the uh, 23rd number uh, of the book of Psalm as opposed to the 23rd chapter uh, of the book of Psalm. But I I I'm going to accommodate uh, your tradition here uh, and, and call uh, 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 them chapters as opposed to divisions and our numbers. Now, just like I suggested to you that, that I have my playlist, that's what the book of Psalms is. See, it is the hymnal for both the Old and the New Testament people of God. They, they sang them uh, in the temple. They sang them in the sanctuary. They sang them uh, in the synagogue. They sang them uh, uh, in the church. You know, it, it, it's the hymnal. It, these were the songs that they would sing as they would worship uh, and praise God. But just like, listen, listen to me carefully, just like they had, uh, just like we have uh, individualized songs based upon uh, certain moods, uh, a certain situations, a certain travels, a certain relationships. Come here, come here. We have them in the book of Psalms. In other words, there are different types of Psalms. Uh, they are what are called, and, and if you're watching the screen here, they're what are called royal songs. Uh, Psalms 2 is one of these songs. Psalms 110 is one of these songs. They, they, they are songs uh, where people would sing uh, talking about the king. <laughs> and then there are what are called songs of lament. Uh, lament, like the book of Lamentation, uh, means a cry to God for help. Uh, because of trouble that either the psalmist was experiencing or the nation itself was experiencing. Psalm 60 is a good example of that. Then, then there are, uh, on, on the playlist, that, that there are testimonials of songs of praise. That these are songs that give honor to God for who he is and for what he has done, Psalms 30 and Psalms 34 uh, would be examples of that. And then there are what we're called, uh, and I'm going to get into some of these uh, during the next couple of days during the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the conference as well as Wednesday night. Uh, they're what are called pilgrim songs. Watch this. Uh, are songs of ascent. I, I, I'm going to show you some photos uh, when Dr. Crawford and I were uh, an, on a study tour in Israel uh, several years ago. Uh, you know, these songs came home to me in a special kind of way uh, because we had toured the what is called the Holy Land. 
uh, uh, Israel, uh, but we started in the northern part uh, uh, of the country, and we made our way back to the southern part of the country, and that's where uh, Tel Aviv, the capital city, uh, and that's where Jerusalem, uh, uh, the, the holy city, the, the city of David, and and as we were nearing the holy cities, uh, it, it was like taking off in an airplane. You you were going up and up and up. The, 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 oh my goodness gracious! I'm I'm trying to hold the shout. And there are 15 psalms from Psalms 120 to Psalms 134. Uh, these are called songs of ascent. Now, to ascent means, obviously, uh, to go up. You see, uh, Jerusalem is located on top of a mountain. There's a city on top of a mountain, almost like, like Denver, Colorado. Uh, and uh, for about 30 to 45 minutes, you, you are constantly uh, going up to the city. You, you you find Psalms like Psalms 100. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go uh, into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Uh, and so uh, here are songs, watch this, that the nation would sing as they were going up to Jerusalem. See, that's why they're called pilgrim songs. The pilgrims were going to Jerusalem to observe certain festivals and certain holy days. And since they travel in groups and they travel in caravans, people, as they near the city, they start uh, breaking out in these travel songs, uh, if you will. Uh, I, I shall never forget when the President Obama uh, was being uh, inaugurated. Uh, it was a cold January morning. And I'd gotten up about four o'clock and made my way down to the Capitol grounds. Uh, and and it took us, it took me from five o'clock, uh, from five o'clock in the morning to about 1130 in freezing cold. Uh, to get inside of the grounds in order to hear uh, the first African-American president deliver uh, his inaugural address. But because uh, I was there representing uh, Mama Nell, I, I was there uh, representing slaves and, 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 and our people who didn't have the right to vote and people who died uh, for the right uh, to vote, uh, you know, uh, all of these great uh, civil rights leaders uh, of the past who who never saw what what I was witnessing. I I used to watch my mother every November go and pay a tax called a poll tax uh, in order uh, to vote. And uh, uh, I'm sitting there cold, uh, and and along with about two million other folk uh, trying to get. Uh, as close as we could uh, to hear the president speak. And, and one of the ways we encourage ourselves uh, in the freezing weather, and I saw old black men and old black women uh, literally falling out. And, and, and watch it, not, not just black men and black women, I saw old white men and white women who wanted to be a part, who wanted to witness history, standing there with us, and all of us standing there together. Ain't nobody saying no color because we're all cold. <laughs> uh, if, if there were some Republicans around, uh, the, the, uh, they were there because they knew history was going on. So regardless of your political stripes, you wanted to see history. But in that freezing cold, one of the ways that we encourage ourselves is we start singing certain kinds of songs. We start singing the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, yes, we did. Uh, we start 
singing America the Beautiful. Uh, we started singing, watch this, patriotic songs. But as we neared the entering of the gates, I won't ever forget it. Somebody broke out. Somebody. From Mama Neem's crowd broke out in a song entitled, We've Come. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I hear you. I hear you repeating it right there. We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, and and we start singing that song. And I can remember some uh, uh, some white people saying to me, uh, "Sir, we, we we don't know that song." And I said to them, that song comes out of trouble and trial and tribulation and slavery. Even though our ancestors were slaves, they still had hope for this country. And we still do. There's a lot wrong in America. There's a lot of racism uh, in America. But we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. And I said to them, uh, that song is what our forefathers would sing during the days of slavery, during the days of Jim Crow, during the days of segregation. As bad as things were in the country, we still believe that God, that by leaning on the Lord, the Lord will continue to lead and to guide us. And listen, I still believe that. <laughs> but I'm not the only one that believed that. We still believe that. The progress that we've made in this country, we've made because our trust has been in the Lord and not in the White House. My trust has been in the King Kings and not in the president. Now, none of us are begrudging the president. We pray for the president. But we know that our hope is not on Capitol Hill. <laughs> our hope is not in the White House. That, that I hope doesn't fly on Air Force One. But I hope comes from another hill. That's Calvary's hill. Red, yellow, black, or white, we're all precious in his sight. His blood, Jesus' blood was shed for all of us. And so we look toward heaven and we look toward God's throne. We look toward the king of kings. We look for a throne higher than the one in Washington, D.C., over in the Knesset uh, in Israel, or uh, over in Russia, or Germany, or Great Britain. Oh, they got the kings over there, but our king. <laughs> is king of kings. So, so these were the songs that they would sing on their way up to Jerusalem. And then there was a, another kind of uh, songs on their playlist. These were called, and we go, we, we'll look at some of these. These were called imprecatory. We ain't never heard of that word before. Well, it, it's a Bible word. Uh, imprecatory is the kind of psalm and the kind of songs and of the kind of poems, and, and, and that's what the psalms are. They, their poems set the music, and that's all they are. We'll say more about that in the days to come. But, but imprecatory psalms are, are, are really unique. <laughs> See, these are the kind of songs where somebody want to say to God, get yeah, 
They, they, they done mess with me. <laughs> they, they've hurt me. Uh, my enemies have come against me. And, and I'm going to show you that, that, that they will say to God, bust their heads. I'm going to show you that they will say to God, watch this, kill their children. Say what? The, 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 they would say to God, Lord, blot their names out of the book of life. And the, the, they would say to God, God, consider their prayer to you a sin. Lord, don't even hear it. And if you hear it, consider it a sin that they even ask you for anything. Say, come on, Dr. Barclay. Uh-huh. There's a whole category uh, of songs like this. And that's one of the reasons I love uh, the book of Psalms, because they deal with every situation and every emotion that you and I will face in life. Then there are what are called penitential uh, songs or psalms or poems. Uh, they, they express sorrow over sin. Now, this group is composed mostly by David, but there are others. The most famous of all of them is, is Psalm number 51. Uh, and, and in Psalm number 51, David has committed adultery uh, with another man's wife whose name is Bathsheba. Uh, he's been exposed. David has had the man killed. Uh, and D David finally repents and he comes back to God and he said, Lord, Cleanse me. Wash, wash me clean. Uh, don't take away your Holy Spirit from me. See, see it's penitential. He's expressing sorrow uh, over sin. And then there are wisdom psalms. And, and that's the first one of uh, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly and all, uh, uh, sitting in the uh, standing in the way of sinners, nor sitting in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Uh, see, see, that is what is called a wisdom song. It's, it's giving instructions. It's giving uh, direction. And, and, and then there, there's a category of songs on the playlist that are called uh, historical songs. Uh, these are songs that reflect upon God's dealings with the nation of Israel. And then, of course, there are uh, songs uh, that we call nature psalms. And these are songs that give praise uh, to God for his handiwork uh, and power as he has demonstrated uh, in creation. Oh, God, how excellent is thy name in all of the earth. Uh, and so the uh, Psalms like, you know, Psalms 8 and Psalms 10 and Psalm 104, uh, for uh, example. And we'll look at, uh, uh, hopefully, uh, I know in Wednesday night Bible class, we're, we're, we're going to look at each one of these. All right. Now, we're not going to have time to get to them in the context uh, of conference. We'll only be doing a, a couple of lectures uh, for you uh, in the conference. But now, uh, 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 one of my favorites uh, are artists that I grew up with. Uh, uh, he was a blind gentleman called Stevie Wonder. Mm. Back in the 70s, mid 70s, um, Stevie Wonder produced an album. Uh, and he entitled the album Songs in the Key of Life. <laughs> Think that one through. Songs in the Key of Life. And, and the album was viewed as a guided tour through a wide range of musical styles and genres uh, and the life uh, and feelings of the artists. Uh, he had songs in there where uh, he recalled his childhood. Uh, he had songs on that album that spoke about uh, his first loss and his first love. Uh, it contained songs about faith and love among all peoples 
uh, songs in the album that spoke about social justice uh, for the poor and for the downtrodden. But as you're looking at the screen, as you're looking at the slide here, uh, what's significant is uh, is the title of the album, Songs in the Key of Life. See, sometimes life is real flat. Sometimes life is, is real sharp. I, I'm dealing with the musical skill here. Uh, uh, sometimes life is a high note. Sometimes it's, it's soprano. And sometimes it's bass. And sometimes it's key. And what Stevie Wonder was trying to get across is that as you live life, you'll experience all of these troubles and trials and tribulations and stresses and struggles. And yet what the album suggests is there's a song for that. <laughs> Wherever life finds you, if it finds you flat, if it finds you sharp, if it finds you high, if it finds you low, if it finds you soprano, if it finds you tenor, if it finds you bass, there's a song for that. Uh, I recently uh, ordered uh, and read a book in preparation for this presentation. Uh, the book is by uh, Don Campbell and Alex Doman. The book is entitled, as you see on the screen, uh, Healing at the Speed of Sound. Let, 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 let me slow this down. In the book, uh, their research revealed the healing power of music. Okay, let, let, let me try that again. Uh, the, their research revealed that music has healing powers. Uh, oh, come on now. Uh, tell me that you, you haven't had over the course of your life a broken heart, broken marriage, broken relationship, and you found comfort in a song. Well, that's what that book uh, is about, that, that, that music has healing power. They, they argue that music has medicinal properties. <laughs> it helps us to heal our hurts and process our pain. Music has a way of emoting what we cannot explain or articulate. Come on now. Am I the only one? Uh, in days gone by, where a song got me through the night, where a song got me through the day, where a song got me through death, and stress, and struggle, and strife. Music has a way. <laughs> Come on. How many times has your favorite artist come on? And you said, yeah, I, I heard it. I heard it. I'm the only one here, but, but, but I heard you say it. 
that's my song. That, 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 that's my song. <laughs> she gonna kill me. Uh, but uh, we just had uh, our season sing supper. Uh, and my wife brought uh, a gentleman in uh, who sings uh, uh, much like Luther Vandross, the Our Season Saint Supper. And, and when the imitator of Luther came in dressed in his black, and, and Luther and, 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 and Victory starts singing that song, <laughs> she's been a 40 year friend of ours, that girl in brown. Just lost it. I mean, she she loves her some Luther. And when that fella came through that door singing one of Luther's songs, she, she, she stood there, she hugged him as if she was saying, sing to me. Now, 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 if, if I come up missing, Carolyn Brown did it. Yeah, 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 she did it. She did it. She did it. She did it. Uh, in fact, she jumped on me just this past week. She said, you didn't call anybody else. I, I said, Carolyn, I didn't see anybody else. Uh, jump up and dance with Luther as if Luther was just singing to you. <laughs> Come on. All of us. In fact, I'm, I'm going to show you my jam <laughs> be, be, before this lecture is over. But, but what I'm saying to you is this. Music has a way of emoting what we cannot explain or what we cannot articulate. <laughs> Music is so powerful that we can put on our favorite jam. Now I'm talking young folk talk now, so uh, so 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 uh, uh, you you you're just gonna have to accommodate me here. Uh, music is so powerful, as the slide says, that that we can put on our favorite piece of music. That's what jam means, all right. We we can put on our favorite music. In the morning, watch this, as we're taking a shower, sing off key and don't even care. About some time ago, um, uh, went in the room, uh, wife was dressing, uh, she was singing some song. And I said to the girl, I, I said to her, uh, what are you doing? Uh, are you hurting? I mean, something wrong with you? You, you. She, she was singing one of her favorite songs, and 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 she was missing notes, missing words, but she had the tune right, and 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 she 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 could care less that that she missed some words or got some words out of place, because her favorite movie, uh, her, her favorite a uh, song. Uh, was playing. That, that's how powerful music is. Uh, you know, that, that's, uh, sometimes I sit by folk in church who don't get the words right. And, and I want to look around and say, uh, you know, it, it says uh, salvation has come down. But they sing in salvation that gone to town. And I'm saying, you ain't a bit more reading that songbook than Man in the Moon. But watch this. They're worshiping God. They're, they're praising God. And, and they don't care if they got the notes right. They're in the presence of God. Mm, Priest Dr. Barclay. Now, I want you to look at the next graphic on the screen where I suggest that, that music has the power to take the stress out of your day. You, you can be on one of these parking lots that we call Interstate 20, Interstate 285, Interstate 75, Highway 400, and rush hour traffic. But if the right song comes on the radio, <laughs> or you put your song on one of your playlists and your favorite song is playing, it helps the ride home or to work 
with a little less stress. That's how powerful music is. But then look, look, look at the impact of music. Have you ever been on the freeway? Uh, uh, one of these roads or highways uh, here in the Georgia area. And, and you pull up beside someone in another vehicle. Now, now you in your car. They, they in their car. They got their windows down. And they have their radio uh, or their iPhone or their iPad connected to uh, the system. And it's up real loud. And 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 they well, our sis, they, they're in their car with the jam going on. I, I mean, and 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 you blow your horn, uh, they, they ain't even looking at you because they got their own block party going on. They, they, they got their own concert uh, behind the steering wheel, uh, getting their groove on. Because of the impact of music. And watch this as we near the end, the first presentation. Music and the right song. <laughs> Has a way of taking you back to a time a place and a person. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. Haven't you heard a song that, that took you back to high school? Come on. Some of y'all will remember Icky Breaky Heart. Turn now and then and come on the radio. Tell my hair, achy, breaky heart. It, it takes me back to a high school football game where the band was performing it on the field and the drill team was dancing to achy, breaky heart. Because music and the right song has a way of taking you back to a time, a place, and a person. I lean on this note for part one. I buried my mother in February of the year 2000. She, she got a chance to make it uh, into the 21st century. Um, uh, after funeralizing, uh, my mother, um, uh, I went to church the next morning. I didn't preach. I, I, I was just, you know, too emotional, uh, and too grief stricken, uh, to preach that morning. And, and, and one of my assistants preached for me that morning. And I sat there, uh, in the audience, didn't even sit in the pulpit. I, I, I sat in the audience. And, and and I was okay until the song leader <laughs> starts singing this song. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lived. And then when they start singing the chorus, because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life 
is worth the living just because he lived. Now, see, you done missed your preaching point. The day before, bury my mother. But the song reminded me because he lives, I could face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. And then the last stanza of the verse says, of the song says this. And then one day, I'll cross the river. And I'll fight life's final war with pain. And then, as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory, and I'll know he reigns. It's because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because he know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lived. I broke down. Uh, Psalms, my wife, I had to come uh, and to comfort me. Uh, but, I, but I want you to watch this. I miss mama. And I still miss mama. And in fact, today, uh, when I sung little Willie Davis, sings that song, I lose it. Uh, I, I have to take a moment to collect myself because that song took me back to a time, a place, and a person. And every time I hear it, it takes me back not to that Saturday, but to that Sunday morning. Because as my wife came to comfort me, as my two sons came to comfort me, it was comforting to hear that song. And that song got me through that service because it reminded me. And it reminds me one day, I'll cross the river and I'll fight life's final war with pain. But death will give way to victory and I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know he reigns. Would you join us? Check, check the schedule uh, for uh, the next lesson uh, in this series, uh, as I will discuss with you, watch this, the background and the structure of the book of Psalms. And until then, may the Lord of the harvest bless you, and may he bless you real good. God sent his son they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He bled and died just to buy.
The Lee.